In this video, I'll show you how to install MySQL Server, which is currently on version 8.0.29 on Windows 10 64-bit. I will also show you how to install the MySQL Workbench and the MySQL Shell. The Shell is a command line tool that will allow you to work on MySQL that is create databases, tables, etc. on the command line. So just open your browser and search for MySQL. Select the first result, which is from mysql.com. And then when it opens up, select the Downloads tab. Then scroll down and click on MySQL Community Downloads. When this opens up, then click on MySQL Installer for Windows. As you can see, the current version of MySQL is 8.0.29, and we have two installers, a web installer which will pull the required files off the internet, and an offline installer which we will use. The installer is 32-bit, but it will install both 32 and 64-bit binaries. Now just click on Download. You don't need to log in or sign up. You can just click on No Thanks, just start my download, and it will start your download. Once the download is complete, just open your download location and double click on the file to start the installation. If you get user account control pop-ups, just click on yes to allow the installation to go through. You then need to choose the setup type. I will keep the developer default option selected and it will install the server, the shell, the workbench, among other things such as the connector and the documentation. If you want fine grained control of what to install, you can select custom and then click on next. And then here you can select and move to the right the products to install. For example, if I just wanted to install the MySQL server only, I'll just select it here and then move it to the right to be installed. But since I want the developer default, I'm just going to click on back, select it, and then click on next. You will then see a list of everything that is going to be installed. As you can see, I've got the server, the workbench, and the shell, which are the three things that I want, among other things. If you're happy with this, just click on execute to install the packages. It will take a few minutes to install all of these packages. Once the installation is complete, just click on next and then click on next again to configure the products. If you are not setting it up on a development computer, you can click the config tab drop down and select the right option. I'm going to keep the defaults and then click on next. I am going to keep use strong password selected for the authentication method and then click on next. Now we need to set the root, which is the admin password. So just put a strong password here and then repeat the password. As you can see, my password strength is strong. Whatever you do, don't forget this password. At this point, we only have the root user, so I will create another user. So just click on add user here. In the dialog that appears, put in the username. Mine is going to be NKT Studios. On the host, just click on the drop down and select local host as we are working on the local system. On the row, if you click on the drop down, you can select the row that you want but I will keep DB admin selected. And then you have to put in a password for this user. And then confirm it here. As you can see, once again, I do have a strong password. And click on OK. And as you can see, we have a new user here. Click on Next to continue. Now we'll get the details about the Windows service that will start the MySQL server. As you can see, the service name is MySQL 80. Again, I'll keep the defaults and then click on Next. Now we need to apply the configuration for the SQL Server, so click on Execute to apply the changes. As you can see, the configuration for my SQL Server 8.0.29 was successful. Now we need to click on Finish to continue. The next thing that we need to configure is the MySQL router or router. So just click on Next. I will keep the defaults, so I'll just click on Finish. The last thing that we need to configure is the samples and examples. So just click on next. Then you need to put in the root password that we configured earlier. 
and then click on check to check the connection. The connection succeeded, so we can click on next. Then click on execute to apply these configurations. As you can see, the configuration for samples and examples was successful. You can then click on finish. With all the configurations complete, we can click on next. At this point, the installation is complete and we have the option to start both the workbench and the shell after setup. But before we click on finish, let us set the path so that we can access the MySQL server from anywhere on the command line. So go to where MySQL was installed. For me, it is C, Program Files, MySQL. Once there, go into MySQL Server 8.0 and then into bin and then copy this path. Now go to Start and search for Environment Variables and then select it. Then click on Environment Variables. In the Environment Variables dialog that comes up, under System Variables, select Path, and then click on Edit. Then click on New, and then paste in the path that we just copied, and then click on OK, and then click on OK, and then click on OK to close the dialogs. Now click on Finish, and this will close the setup and start the MySQL Workbench and the MySQL Shell. You can see the Workbench was started, as well as the shell. To verify our MySQL server installation, open command prompt and then type in MySQL dash dash version and press enter. You should see the MySQL version 8.0.29 for Windows 64 bit displayed. In the next video, I will show you how to connect to MySQL using the command line MySQL shell as well as MySQL workbench to create, view, and modify databases. Thanks for watching. Please like the video if you liked it and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll catch you in the next one.